Cape Disappointment in Southern Washington, home of both a Coast Guard station and the National Motor Lifeboat School. Situated near the mouth of the Columbia River, where it flows into the Pacific Ocean and in the process creating turbulent seas, Coast Guard crews here are often called to tow disabled boats into port. This means crossing one of the most dangerous strips of water in the world, the Columbia River Bar. Because of the many shipwrecks that have occurred here, this area has been known since the 1800s as the graveyard of the Pacific. We were out doing our training on towing approaches, taking each other in tow. We heard the Sea King initially call for assistance. The riser engine went out uh, 35 minutes before we got started again. So we've gotten a lot of giving you any help. Well, the Sea King is going to be The four school boats immediately dispatched to the scene, broke off their training, and went right to the scene for the Sea King. In addition, a call goes out to Astoria, Oregon for assistance. Two Coast Guard helicopters and the cutter Iris, a buoy tender, are dispatched to the scene. One of the helos immediately puts two crewmen onto the Sea King to help run emergency pumps. Winds were right around 70 knots. Sea conditions were 18 to 20 feet. We get sea breaks right around 25 foot. Determination was made to take the majority of the crew members off of the Sea King. They had hoisted one and they were in the process of the hoisting the second crew member. The cable uh, got caught up in the rigging on the boat, so they had to shear the cable, which in fact, in turn, dropped the crew member back down to the deck of the boat. The crewman from the Sea King is injured during the fall. Petty Officer Rudy Sexton is put onto the boat to help. They chose to put Petty Officer Sexton on board because he was an EMT and he could go over and off for first aid. And uh, basically he got on board, stabilized the patient, got everything set up with him, and then assisted the skipper in not only uh, steering the boat, but uh, keeping the boat running. Um, shortly after that, Station Cape Disappointment launched the Triumph, and they went out to tow the Sea King back into the harbor. I knew it was gonna be tough getting it in tow, just given the conditions. When the conditions were favorable for us, we started in across the bar. We noticed a few things happening. Uh, the boat started to go down a little bit by the stern, a little bit more. The engine room was about half full of water. We had three pumps running at a time, and one of them died. Just all of a sudden, it seemed like out of nowhere, the boat just rolled over. By the time we got the tow line cut and turned around, the sea king had completely rolled over. But I couldn't believe it. Just for a split second, there was a little bit of panic because everybody was really caught by surprise. Get off the boat! Get it! Get it! Right. Starboard! Stand by! Stand by! Let him get out away from the boat! There's seven people on the boat. Get out away from the boat! I got it! Um, we could only see a couple of them as it's going over. The guys were getting tangled up in some of the rigging and some. Yeah, can you get on the loud hailer and tell them to get off the boat? It's, Come on, guys, get out of the boat, you know, get away from there. And then eventually, one by one, people started popping up. I was swept off the deck, sucked under the boat, and back out the stern. My biggest fear at the time was because the way I came out next to the, the net reels is that I was going to wind up in the nets because the nets were, you know, coming open. When we recovered the first two uh, people out of the water, and they were both Coast Guardsmen. Uh, Starboard's gone! I get the light break! As they came alongside the boat, they were pretty wide-eyed, pretty excited, and uh, they were pretty much yelling out and asking where Rudy was. And, uh, they kept repeating that over and over, where's Rudy? Rudy was the MK1 that was on the boat. And, uh, well, they saw him trying to kick the window out of the boat, trying to get out of the cabin, and uh, that was hadn't seen him after that. The 47 picked up who they could account for. They were concerned with one of the person's conditions, so they rushed him back in. Uh, the ambulance met us at the dock, and they took the, the guy off that was unconscious that they were conducting CPR on. We still had not recovered Petty Officer Sexton or the skipper of the fishing boat. You know, it uh, really hits close to home when it's somebody you know that you deal with on a regular basis. I, I, was, I certainly was hoping that we would find him and that he'd be alive. We found Rudy in about an hour to an hour and a half. Sexton was uh, pretty much at the pinnacle of his career. He was about to be advanced. He was a single parent with uh, two kids. 
So uh, that was a tough loss. Uh, I still think about it often. Once he was found, we returned to the station. Everybody was really, really downhearted and, and uh, pretty seriously dejected. Yeah, Skipper didn't uh, didn't surface for three weeks later up at uh, Grays Harbor. And the third uh, casualty was an uh, injured crewman. You lose know, lives on a mission that you shouldn't. You know, you're always going to maybe second guess yourself. Maybe if you did something different, uh, it would have turned out a different way or whatever. But when it comes right down to it, you did everything you could. And the mission, you know, that's just the way the mission came out. And in this job, I don't want to boast, but I think I work with heroes every day, men and women. They don't make millions. They're not pro ball players, but, you know, I think Rudy would have done the same thing all over again.